So after this video, there are only two reasons why you won't be able to remove something from a photo in Photoshop. The first one being that it is way too complex and you should have just fixed it before you took the photo to prevent the having to do the editing. And the second reason is I'm just not good enough because there are definitely people who are way better at Photoshop than I am. I'm what you would like to call or what I like to call um, a minimalist. I like to do the bare minimum to get the maximum result. So yes, there are better people at Photoshop than I am. And yes, I do a lot of prep work prior to taking the photo to make it easier in editing. But sometimes it's just not that possible. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Today, like I mentioned, we are going over four methods of removing things from Photoshop in images. Now, just as I mentioned before as well, it is very important and actually will save you so much time in the long run if you take a little bit extra time before taking the photo to observe your surroundings. If there's a person in the background that you can wait 30 seconds and they'll be out of the photo to take the photo, it will save you time. If you can readjust your angle to remove the trash can in the background so it's not in the photo and you don't have to edit it out, it will save you time. So rather than just, because a lot of people do this, I know I did it so many times when I first started and still to this day, honestly, I still do. I forget to look around. You're focused on the subject and the subject only, making sure everything is right, the settings, the focus, the, the framing, this, that, and the other thing, and you forget to look around the subject. Now, yes, it might be blurred out, but still, you take a picture of, the, of your model, or your couple, or your family, and there's this big, dark blob in the background from a trash can, or uh, a light post, or a family taking a selfie, or you know, whatever it is. It's blurry, but it's still noticeable. So take a minute, look around your subject, adjust as needed, and it will save you so much time Trust me on this. So here's a photo that we took uh, last week and I have uh, covered up the subject just for privacy reasons, but this is one of those cases where the location that we were shooting was super popular. There were people everywhere and to wait for everyone to move just took so long. So this was a great photo to show these examples. For this photo, we're gonna use four different methods. The first one is the spot healing brush tool, the remove tool, the clone stamp tool and generative fill. Now there are multiple other tools to, to remove things, but for this, these are the four main ones that I use. I really don't use any of the other ones except for very rare occasions. So these are the four that I use on almost any image that I need to remove things. So let's start with the spot healing brush tool. So if you press J on your keyboard, you can also go up here and you can right click on it where you can see all these options. We're gonna start with the spot healing brush we're going to select our background layer and we're gonna press Command or Control J. You can also drag this down to the plus sign and it will create a copy. The reason I do this is because then I always have an original. That way, if I truly, truly mess up the photo and I can't get back, I have a backup for that reason. So we're gonna rename this one photo. Really doesn't matter what you name it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on this section here, press Z on the keyboard, click and swipe right. Now things like this, you can pretty much use the spot healing brush. So J on the keyboard, and we're just going to paint over this person. That didn't look good. All right, let's uh, try this. Good, that's good enough. Now you see how it didn't work too well and it made a duplicate here. So what tool could we use to make that quicker? That's right, the stamp tool. So we're gonna press the S on the keyboard, or you can go over here to the stamp tool, clone stamp. We're gonna select a sample, pushing and holding Alt or Option right here on the, the uh, shrub. Line it up and just stamp it there. Perfect, that's fine. There's a little bit of a duplicate, so we go back to the spot healing brush tool with J on the keyboard and just see if we can erase that get rid of uh, duplicates. Now this is in the background, so it doesn't have to be perfect, so that's totally fine. No one's gonna notice that. Now let's scroll down here where it made a duplicate of the drain, and we're gonna fix that by just using the spot healing brush tool to clean that up. Again, it's in the background, so if we press Command or Control Zero, you're never gonna notice. Here's the before, 
Here's the after. Looks totally fine. It looks like one of those uh, walk-up sections of the, the sidewalk. Good, now let's zoom in here to this trash can. Now we'll try the spot healing brush tool, J on the keyboard, and just paint over it. Perfect, I love it, looks good. Now I'm pushing space, pushing and holding space bar and then clicking to move to navigate through the image, just so you know what's happening there. Now for this guy, let's try the spot healing brush tools again. Sometimes, twice, nope, okay good. Now for this guy, what we're gonna use is the remove tool. So we'll right click on the spot healing uh, brush section and click remove. Now this is a new tool that uh, Adobe updated a little bit ago, but it's actually really, really nice. If you look up here, you'll notice it says remove after each stroke. Now what that means is if you paint on a section, right? See, I've painted that section. Now I don't have this checked. So if I then paint here, 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 I come up here and press the check mark and then it does its job. So if I want it to say, do it after every time I click, drag, let go, and then it'll do it, I have that box checked. So let's unselect this, so Command Z to undo those. We're gonna check this box, I'm gonna click and let go. And then see, it automatically starts. Boom, now that worked so good. So here's the before, after, before, after. That, looked, that worked so much better than the spot healing brush. Now depending on how much I wanna remove, I will have this unchecked because I like to paint a bunch and then go back to it. So let's press Command or Control Zero. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and use the Remove tool again. I always try and use the easiest tool first. So first the Spot Healing Brush, that doesn't work. Is it clone stampable? Like in this case, it wouldn't be clone stampable because there's the brick and the, the, the steps, so it's not gonna match. So maybe the, rem the Remove tool. So we're gonna try that. So click this one, make sure Remove tool is selected, and let's just paint over this. We're gonna do a big selection here because we're gonna just try it. And check mark. So let's see what happens. Removing area. Not too bad. This looks a little janky. This, yeah, that's no good. So Command Z. All right, so let's try this. Let's do the remove tool here. Now, when I originally did this image, I did generative fill on this whole section and it worked great. So we're gonna get to that. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's go to this guy and see if the remove tool will move, will erase this guy. Good, and check. The thing about the remove tool, it's actually much faster than uh, generative fill, depending on how much you're doing, but it, it's kind of in the mid ground. I find the spot healing brush is the, oh God, that looks terrible. Okay, to generative fill we go. So we'll press L on the keyboard for the lasso. We're going to circle this guy here. We're going to include this back. You know what? Screw it, let's include the trash can too. Let's just see what happens. Good, generative fill. We're going to generate, we're not going to put any prompt and we're gonna let it do its thing. Now this has gotten much faster as the, as the updates have come out, so this, and it just works so freaking good. I have found that if I was not sure how to do something and I used generative fill, it blew my mind nine out of 10 times. Like, look at this whole, I mean, come on. You, you just cannot beat that. Look at this, before, after, before, after. It's incredible. It even made the sidewalk perfect. It, I mean, this that's insane. That is so good. So let's go to the next one here. We're gonna do the generative fill with this whole group here and see what happens. Include some of the palm tree. Good, generative fill. And again, you start with the spot healing brush. If that doesn't work, do the remo use the remove tool. If that doesn't work, generative fill, nine out of 10 times, you're golden. Remember what the well, only two reasons you won't be able to remove things from now on is? that I mean. Next. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do this guy here. Include the tree because there's the guy behind there. Just circle all this. And let's get real fancy and let's include her in the selection. So I press shift to add a plus sign for the selection and add this into the selection. Let's just see. Let's get fancy, people. Let's get fancy. Good, generate, and 
voila. Okay, not as good. Sometimes doing them individually works a lot better, but this still worked really good. You can also choose from different selections here. Now that's not bad. This works, honestly, it works totally fine. But we're gonna delete this and we're gonna do this individually. So first we're gonna try with her. So we're just gonna select her, generative fill, generate, and I'll make this faster. All right, so there's, she's gone, so that looks great. Now we're going to circle the trash can here and we're hoping that it replaces it with like the brick and, oops, generate, and there we go. All right, so that didn't work too good, but that looks okay and that looks great. So we're gonna leave it at that one. And then the final one, we're just going to circle all of these people, generate. So doing it individually sometimes works a little bit better, but you can get saucy and see about generating the whole damn thing and sometimes it works. Okay, good, there's the, there's the generation. So that one looks better than the first one and that one actually works because it kind of covers, I don't know what this weird tree is thing. So let's go with the first one here because that looks totally fine. Let's zoom out and there we have it. Here, let me group all of these together so you can see the before and afters. So here's the before. Here is the after. I mean, incredible. So in conclusion, start with the spot healing brush or clone stamp. If those don't work, try the remove tool. And if that doesn't work, finally use the generative fill or you could just skip to the generative fill and see what happens. But that's pretty much how to remove anything in Photoshop and make it look really, really well. And the only two reasons why not, one, you should have fixed it before you took the picture or it shouldn't be removed at all. And two, it's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and that's it. So if you want to keep watching some videos, check that one out, check that one out, or uh, I'll see you next week, one of the two.